Hey folks, welcome to a nice 82 workshop Wednesday with a difference. This is just a quick update on basically rolling stock storage. Um, I'll come back to this in a moment. You remember ages and ages and ages ago, I talked to you about putting rolling stock away in plastic containers like this, which is fine and it's great and it's really helped me to move them up to the new room. Well, the green room. I don't know why I call it the new room. And um, that's fantastic. But it does make getting hold of the stuff really, really difficult. The Sunday shorts require me to have access to as many items of rolling stock as possible. And then being away in containers like this just makes that impossible. So I need to try and get as much of it out again and store it uh, somehow differently. And we finally have that solution. Here we go. Look at this. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry it's taken so long to do, but you will not believe how difficult this has been. For a start, um, B and Q are constantly out of stock of these little black supporters. In fact, they're so, they're in such chronic short supply that we're going to have to order them offline. There's no other way around it. Um, and then, just as we did get into routing all of this, the bit, the bit that, that, that goes into the router snapped, snapped clean in two on a Sunday evening, just after the shops had shut. <laughs> oh, so finally, we got round to replacing that part, um, which they did for free, and I should think so, because it had barely done a meter and then it snapped in two. And thankfully the second bit is much better and we have been able to get all of it done. So Craig has completed the entire top deck um, for me and the bottom deck is also going to have to be finished off as well and then there is going to be a shelf in the middle um, but uh, I think it was, I think the shelves were bought last month and I basically only got enough money to buy um, all the top deck and then all the bottom deck. Um, so yeah, I'll get the middle deck done as soon as possible. But it works! Look! Um, how can I show you? Right. Swap hands. Oh, oh. Let's grab a... Uh, which one are you? Oh, Annie. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Fantastic, eh? People are always telling me off for putting things down on, you know, on any surface and it damaging the flanges, the wheel flanges. They're always telling me to not do that. But I, even though I know that's not ideal, I'd rather do that than light everything down on its side. I mean, just look at this. Can you imagine me just lying that down on its side every time? No! No! Trust me, it's a lot easier to replace wheels than to replace the entire side of a locomotive or a coach or whatever. So I have reluctantly been storing them like this. And um, this isn't an issue with the boxes, I should just say, because the bubble wrap means that everything can lie down and it's fine. There's no damage. There's no risk of damage at all. But when it comes to this kind of vertical, you know, upright storage, yes, a little trough for the wheel flanges is perfect. Look at that. Isn't that brilliant? I think that's so good. This is going to completely revolutionize uh, rolling stock storage, folks. Um, I was going to put it on all of this wall over here, but uh, a few people said don't, and I agree, I'm not going to, because it does actually cast quite a bit of a shadow, <laughs> and this part of the, the layout is famous, isn't it? That's where I put everything on and then get it sent around the test loop. Um, if I put shelving there, it would really affect the light levels, and the number one rule when it comes to filming or photography is light. You need as much light as possible. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it. But I think it'll be okay. Um, I mean, just two rows of this. Well, well, no, I'll start again. Because look, we've got three runs per level, and there's going to be three levels. That's actually quite a lot. I, I think these come to about 50 meters. So 50, 100, 150 meters. That's, that's pretty good. Plus, they're going to go up the side here. They're going to go all the way up there and just stop short of the light. In fact, that light doesn't work, so it can probably come off. But 
Um, it's going to be better. It's, it, yeah, it's going to be really good. I'm really, really, really happy with it. I did get some footage from it being prepared, it being done, because I thought you'd find that interesting, and I really do recommend it. It's just Conti board from b &Q, or you can probably get it from Homebase, Wix, or if you're in America, Home Depot, anywhere. It's really inexpensive, and um, it's perfect for this kind of thing. The router has really done a fantastic job. People kept saying to buy a table saw, and it's fine for people to tell me to buy a table saw. They're not the one paying for it. <laughs> Good table saws are over a hundred pounds, and we did find a table saw for significantly less, but you couldn't adjust the height of the blade. How crazy is that? You couldn't adjust the height of the blade, so you, that meant you couldn't adjust how deep the grooves were, so it was no good. But honestly folks, this router has done a fantastic job, it's really stable, it's got a really nice machine. Look, I'll just show you the footage, here it goes. Okay, it's now time to adjust the router for our next uh, run of rails down the middle. And so I'm going to actually make use of this template that I created, um, both as a practice um, and also to check all my measurements. I created this by using just an ordinary piece of straight track. Um, I measured the exact width of the shelf, found the halfway point and then lined up the track right in the very middle, you can just about see my pencil mark right there. And then using the inside of the rails, I marked off two pencil lines which showed me where the outside of my grooves needed to come to to act as perfect rails. Once I got those two, I then managed to space out the outer side and the inner side equally from the centre, making sure that we had enough room to get our fingers in between. Because I've made this, it makes adjusting my router now a lot quicker than having to measure everything out again and again. I can use this as a guide, so I'm going to loosen at the sides there. Slide it along. And then, if I just lower the router into place, I can make some little nudges. 
until that blade fits into the groove. Tighten it off, and then ready to go.